Last month, the artist known as Beeple sold a collection of digital art for a record-breaking $69.3 million dollars. Celebrities and athletes have jumped on the NFT bandwagon, selling selfies and pictures for incredible prices. Let's start with the basics. What the heck is an NFT? It stands for non-fungible token. What does that mean? Well, here's how Wikipedia defines it. A non-fungible token is a unit of data stored on a digital ledger called a blockchain that certifies a digital asset to be unique and therefore not interchangeable. NFTs can be used to represent items such as photos, videos, audio, or other types of digital files. It's important to understand you can't touch an NFT, so you need some way to prove it's yours because essentially anyone can take a snapshot or screen grab and say it's theirs. I spoke to someone who can explain this new technology much better. Jonathan then, Perkins of Portland right is the co-founder of Super Rare. One of my friends in the early days said, like, whoa, you're like a futuristic art dealer. <laughs> Super Rare is a digital art collecting platform. Art collecting is an industry that is, um, has always been quite exclusive, quite hard to get into. Super Rare is one of just many sites selling original pieces of digital art as NFTs. We see this as an opportunity to make everyone an art collector. Um, all you need is a, you know, a smartphone and an internet connection. It launched its site in 2018 with just a few NFTs. So NFTs are essentially digital objects that one can collect and trade and sell later, um, just like you can a physical painting or sculpture. Super Rare has sold more than 11,000 NFTs and artists on its site have made over $50 million. If you're skeptical, you aren't alone. In the beginning, my dad would, would be like, well, so people still buy an imaginary art? <laughs> so what do you do with an NFT? We've done gallery shows with, uh, you know, walls full of iPads and frames. Being able to view a collection online is also very powerful. So it doesn't necessarily need to go on the wall. But why buy artwork that lives only online? More and more of our identity and our value and our social networks are going online. And if you own an art collection that is online, six billion people in the world can view it. If you own our collection that's in your house, maybe one or two dozen of your friends can, can view it. Perkins says the benefits for artists or digital creators has been huge. Some of the best digital creators in the world um, really have to form their career around doing graphics for movies or advertisements. And now they can do fine art and sell it directly to, um, to collectors. 207's tech guy Rich Brooks emphasized he's not an expert on NFTs, but he's watching the phenomenon with great interest. To me, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yes, you own the original, you own the rights to this piece of thing. But as much as I try and wrap my brain around it, it still feels like nothing more than bragging rights. You can't hold an NFT. You can't cuddle an NFT. Uh, you know, you don't get any love back from an NFT. You might not get any love, but you could certainly get some money. Like the fascination that people have with NFTs and the reason there are so many YouTube videos and the reason why you're probably doing this story now is people are fascinated by the amount of money that people are spending on NFTs. It's kind of like you're bidding on a piece of artwork and you are hoping that the value goes up and you maybe you enjoy that piece of artwork and at some point you might be able to sell that. And so it really it's a little bit of a commodities market. Super Rare recently received $9 million from well-known investors like Mark Cuban and Ashton Kutcher. All these kind of celebrities and you know YouTube personalities and all these random people are kind of issuing NFTs. And I think it's great. I think the experimentation is exciting and, and um, should be done. But I think as far as um, real sustainable markets, we're focused on digital art. Um, we think that focusing on high quality, authentic art that's created by artists, this is already proven to have long-term value. So is this new technology a fad or is it the future? A little bit of perspective. I was a kid when the internet was coming out and you know, uh, middle school, high schooler, and I remember back then people were like, oh, you use the internet? Like, I would never put my credit card on the internet. I would never buy anything. The internet is just for nerds in their basement. It's scams, it's porn, it's just all the, this bad stuff. I've been in, in the blockchain space since 2013, and um, 
it's been kind of the same thing. If you still don't buy things online, you probably don't have to worry about cryptocurrency and blockchain. However, NFTs may be an early iteration of what will be the future of buying, selling, and owning things online. There's a large swath of the population that cares about art, that cares about art collecting, that cares about connecting authentically with these creators that are making really thoughtful work and commentary. Right now, people are just scratching the surface of NFTs. There's so much more to learn about this new technology and many more questions to ask about it. Head over to our website for more information and a link to the Super Rare website. Who knows? Maybe you'll even find a piece of digital art that you want to buy. So Peggy, have your credit card in hand. I am still trying to wrap my head around all of this. It's going to take a while. Oh. <laughs>